Hi, I'm Leanne Lee with another episode of Truly Home from CapFed. Today we are talking about my passion, upcycling. And upcycling is taking something that you own or that someone has previously owned and making it better. That can be through paint, it can be through add-ons, but it's something that maybe you've picked up or inherited and you've made it fit your home. I love to go to garage sales. I love flea markets. I love uh, thrift stores. I even love picking things up off the side of the road. As a matter of fact, this table right here came off of the side of the road. I picked it up with a set of croquet mallets and balls, and I also brought home an eight foot snake. So I'm just gonna tell you right now, be careful when you do that, but you can find some amazing things. So today, we're gonna remake over this table, and I'm super, super excited about it because I know that when we get it finished and I bring it in my home, it's gonna be beautiful. So we're gonna start by sanding it. We're gonna sand it using a palm sander and 220 grit sandpaper. Now this is extremely shiny, so it's gonna take a little bit of elbow grease. Most pieces do not have this sheen on them. But I can tell you, if you don't get the sheen off, it will not stick. No paint or primer will stick to this slick of a surface. So let's take time to get the prep work correctly and then we'll have a beautiful piece. Once your piece is completely sanded, we need to get it completely dust free. And so I'm using a cleaner degreaser that I'm going to spray on. And then I'm going to wipe clean with a rag. We're going to get it nice and clean. Paint will not adhere to dust. It will not adhere to wax. So we want to make sure that we have no wax residue and no dust on our surface. That will almost dry immediately and so we'll be ready to prime. Now I want to talk to you about this specific piece because it was extremely shiny. I mentioned that in the beginning. I'm not sure if it's more of a plastic surface but I'm going to prime it as if it is a piece of plastic. Most paints will not stick to a plastic surface. So keep this in mind when you're picking out your pieces at a garage sale. You know, if you're looking for wood or veneer, it will make a difference when it goes to priming. But let me show you this tip. This is a tip that painters don't tell you about. It's called shellac. Now it doesn't smell great, but this is what I tell everybody. If it doesn't smell, it doesn't stick. Bottom line, so this is what I use for my primer. It's called shellac, and shellac will stick to any surface. And anything will stick to shellac. So it would make sense that if we have a shiny surface, that this will stick to it, and then we can put our paint over the top. Now they make shellac in white, or they make it, here, I'll put this up here so you can see it. They make it in white, or they make it in kind, it looks like an amber color, it does dry clear. But what you want to look for is a wax-free shellac. Believe it or not, they make one that has wax in it. Now we know that paint doesn't stick to wax, so we don't want to use a wax version for our primer. But pick this up and I promise you will have a successful paint finish every single time. So I've got a brush and I've got a roller here ready to go. I always, another tip, I always line my paint trays with press and seal. Yeah, press and seal. You know that stuff that you get and you use it in your kitchen? I steal everything from my kitchen. And what's awesome about this is when I'm done with this, I can wrap it up and I can move on to my next layer with use and use the same paint tray. All right, I'm using a smooth finished velour roller for this. And so I'm getting it saturated with my shellac 
and I'm going to just start rolling it out. Now, this goes a long way. So, be patient, roll it out. Now, I always use a roller for the flat surfaces, but I use a paintbrush for the legs and any place that has a groove like this. You just wanna make sure that it's fully covered because the last thing you wanna do is apply paint and then miss some areas where you've primed it and then have it start to come off. If we're gonna do it, let's do it right. All right, so we're just gonna apply this. It dries extremely fast, which is awesome. So within five minutes, this will be dry. You'll have your prime layer on it and we'll be able to start painting. I'm all about quick and easy, and I promise this is quick and easy. So our shellac is dried and now I'm taking a 220 grit or fine sanding sponge just to lightly sand it. Now I'm really not sanding the surface. What I'm actually doing is just making sure that we don't have an, an adhesion problem. So you feel it. I just want to make sure that all of that is down, it's smooth, and it's going to be a great surface for the paint that we're going to put on. Okay, we're ready for paint. And we are using the color Cityscape Gray. Now, when you're choosing your paint for a piece of furniture, you need to make sure that you're actually getting trim, door, furniture, enamel. There's a big difference between enamel and wall paint. And you just wanna make sure that you get wall paint, or not wall paint, because you wanna make sure that the enamel, it's hard and it's gonna be the perfect product to use for this table. All right, so we've got our enamel in the tray. I'm taking another velour roller, the same type of roller that I use to do my shellac layer. All right, we're gonna get some paint on it. We'll also need a paint brush, remember, for our legs and any grooved pieces. And light coats are better than one flooded coat. So we're gonna start, oh my gosh, I already love it. We're going to start with our first coat and we're going in one direction. Okay, we have one full coat on this piece. You can tell it's going to need another coat. It's not quite covered, but man, it already looks so much better. We're going to let it dry. I usually let it dry a couple of hours just to make sure that it's completely dry in all the cracks and crevices. We'll put another coat on and we'll have a beautiful new coffee table. So I gave it another quick buff just to make sure that it was nice and smooth. Wiped it all off with a rag just to make sure there's no dust. And now I'm ready for my second coat. Now when I put my second coat on, I want to go in the opposite direction than I did on the first coat. So the first coat, I went this direction. So this time I'm gonna go long ways. And that will just help fill in any gaps in the paint. Okay, I've got my final coat on here. We're gonna let it dry overnight. Now this is actually for a friend and she decorates a little bit more contemporary. So I'm gonna leave this very clean and a little more modern looking but I've got some other pieces to show you, so hopefully this will get your imagination going. So this is a piece that I picked up actually out of an old barn. Believe it or not, this was sitting in an old barn. I did a little barn pick, and this was sitting there. It had no hardware or anything on it. I added these appliques to it. It was a dark, dark wood. I really like the mixture of metals with the gold and the silver, and then you add that little bit of crystal, and it just, one of my favorite pieces. But then I have to show you this. Okay, every piece is my favorite. This was a mid, uh, mid-century modern piece. I picked it up off of Craigslist. It's actually, it looks like an old map drawer dresser, and that's because I added little lattice strips to it but it's actually big drawers that I made look like an antique piece. I stained it, added some little file folder pieces to it, accessories and some little map drawer knobs on it. 
and this is one of my favorite pieces too. And then, oh my gosh, I have pieces over here, so we're going to go this way. Oh my gosh, you guys, this, seriously, I just finished this. This is an ottoman that I made out of a coffee table. And I have it undone because I want to show you this. This was a coffee table. It had a glass top on it. And I took the top off and I cut a board for it. And then it's just upholstered, you can see underneath. And I just tacked it with a little bit of upholstery tacks. Some tufting here, it was so easy. And again, one, one of my favorite pieces. I've got more, I've got more to show you. All right, guys, I'm gonna finish with two of my favorite pieces. This is an ottoman or a footstool that I made out of an old tire. Yeah, I'm that girl that picks up the tires on the side of the road and throws them in the back of my truck and then makes ottomans out of them. That's me. And then I wanna show you this. And I have a little story and it might be a little sappy, but this is one of my first pieces I did as an adult. And I picked this up as, as a, at a garage sale and it was $5. And the reason it was $5, if you see here, there's four front legs and you notice this leg is broken. And the lady said it was $5 because it had a broken leg. And I thought to myself, we live in an imperfect world and nothing is perfect. And I snagged that thing up and I finished this and it's one of my favorite pieces and it's seriously a piece that people always comment on when they come. And I think to myself of all the things that people would throw away and just because it had one broken leg, well, good grief, it had three great legs is the way I look at it. So anyway, another one of my favorite pieces. And I just want you to take from this that you can make beautiful things with very little money. I hope that these ideas have inspired you and have got your wheels turning because I promise you, you can take these ideas and make your house truly home.